Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. Um, uh, you know, I wasn't done that long ago from watching the, watching the episode. And I was just about to sit there and do the video. And I don't know what came over me. I don't know what came over me. I don't know if it was my nerves or like, you know, how am I going to sit there and make this review good? And it was, it was, you know, as I'm sitting there thinking about it now, it was kind of silly, but like, <laughs> I was just like, oh, how am I actually going to sit there and make this good? What am I going to sit there and talk about? And like, I, I felt like I was just getting flustered. Like, and I, I guess I feel that way because GH is my show. Like, I do the other reviews, and, and granted, I love those shows, but GH is an entirely different monster. So I guess I want to sit there and do, you know, I guess proper justice once it comes towards my GH reviews, which, in reality, now I'm thinking about it, puts way more pressure on me. Like, if you watch my GH reviews, and then let's say you watch my Bold and the Beautiful review, is completely different. Um, and I don't know if it's just more of a care back attitude, like oh, maybe a lot of people aren't gonna watch it or whatever, as opposed to GH, but it's just something different. And um, I don't know, I guess I can just kind of kind of remind myself to not put so much pressure on myself as far as doing these reviews, especially these reviews, not even so much as the other ones, because I feel like I'm a little more late or more lax. Um, but yeah, so sorry for the delay. Um, so let's talk about Carly and <sighs> Olivia. So in the beginning, you got Carly Smith to talk about Nina. Um, you know, Olivia pretty much asking like, why you didn't sit there and get revenge? Why you didn't sit there and slap the hell out of her? And we all know the reason why. Um, I forgot which one brings up the fact that, you know, Sonny's changed and he's a lot different and you know even when it was not this sound like you know Sonny doesn't want to sit there and retaliate he just kind of just want to move forward you know Olivia was like that doesn't that that, that doesn't sound like Sonny I think what they both don't really know is that you know Sonny's been away for a while and he has feelings for um Nina that didn't go away like that part of his personality didn't go away um so they're talking about that for a little bit. They they bring up Leo for a hot minute because apparently even Carly just asking about Leo, she starts to go off. Um, and of course she talks about divorce with um, Ned, which to be honest at this point, I, I just, I don't even care. I really don't even care. Um, and of course, you know, Olivia just didn't have her fun yet. So... She's um Austin and she starts getting into it with him and she finds out that Ned is the one that asked um Austin, you know, about Leo and his condition. Even at, you know, and this is like after. This is not even like you know, cuz apparently Olivia thought that, you know, well, you know, Olivia was like, "Oh, um, you know, you only listen to trying to, you know, talk to my husband about that because, you know, the shares and stuff like that and you know, Austin was like, yo, listen, I gave up the shares, like, a while ago. Like, he asked me about this stuff afterwards. So, apparently, it's just more ammunition um, to divorce him. Which, to be honest, it's not, I have not been a fan of the way that Ned has been handling this. Because, to be honest, I think he needs to man up. And, um, you know, not really take the crap that's coming from Olivia. But, um... You know, at the same time, I'm like, yo, listen, why don't you just divorce him? Because in the long run, you just be wind up doing him a favor. But of course, night's not over because Joey, you know, who was sent at the docks, talking about how he wants his revenge, you know, on Sonny and Carly and Jason, um, goes to the void and starts up with Carly. Now, of course, Gladys is there because, you know, she is spinning up um, Brooklyn's credit card, like, there's no tomorrow, and I am all for it. I was like, sweetheart, spin it up, okay? Get drinks. You know what? Why don't you, why don't you just sit there and just buy drinks for the whole bar? Just for everyone in the club. Why not? 
Um, but you know, she's there bothering um, Carly. And, you know, she already had to deal with that. But then Joey comes up in, the, in, her, in her face. And he pretty much threatens to come after Carly and her family. But, of course, you know, Joey didn't get the reaction that apparently he was looking for. He was looking for Carly to be the victim, be scared and stuff like that. But, you know, Carly didn't back down. And when Carly didn't back down, Joey got, you know, he's about to get in her face. Of course, Curtis, um, throws his ass out. But, of course, Joey makes a threat. And when he gets down there to the docks, you know, he's not there talking to, I guess, one of his lackeys or whatever. And, you know, he's all like, you know, I'm going to sit there and run this town and no one's going to do anything about it. And, you know, one of the things that he did sit there and say was that, you know, he threatened Curtis, talking about he's going to use his club. As his own little personal meeting, you know, meeting place or whatever. Now, the creepy old guy, who's been just being cr being a creep, um, overhears this. And I saw in the previews that Chase is questioning um, Curtis about his last whereabouts. Now, my guess is that that old guy took care of um, Joey. And I don't know how to feel about that. Because one, Joey spices things up, okay? He definitely spices things up, and I definitely want to sit there and see him go up against Sonny. Two, um, if, if the old guy killed Joey, then what was the point in the meeting with Sonny and Cyrus? I mean, Cyrus pretty much gave him information that Joey is looking to take over. Um, you know, being a hothead, having something to prove, and pretty much just kind of watching his back. Now, granted, he did that in exchange for a favor. And, of course, Sonny was like, yeah, you know, I'll sit there and think about that. I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> All right, bro, you don't do that favor for him. I mean, I guess he forgot the fact that his reach, you know, when he was in jail the first time, nearly killed Sonny and his family. So... You know, between that and just kind of coming into jail being a little kind of arrogant. It's like, I mean, granted, I get he has to sit there and kind of show a certain level of strength and bravado and stuff like that. But I'm like, yo, don't don't sleep on Cyrus. It's just, you nearly paid, you know, you nearly paid, um, paid with your life for that. The first time. And your family. Um, but yeah, um, it would just, I feel like it would make that whole meeting somewhat pointless now of course Gladys is not there talking to Austin and during this episode he remembers that you know Brooklyn was really afraid of Gladys being in a room with Valentine. so you know she's all kind of drunk and everything like that and she starts talking about um Brooklyn a little bit and at this point, you know, at first, you know, Austin was like, you know, maybe the next drink you need to kind of just, you know, just, just sip it. But, you know, he realized that he could sit there and use Gladys to get information about Brooklyn. So he was like, yo, I, I bought the next drink. And I'm with it. I'm with it. Um, like I said, the way that Brooklyn has been just going about it with Austin and like, she just, she just pissed me off. So... I know, here's the thing, I know a lot of people don't like Gladys, and I'm one of them, but <laughs> Brooklyn pissed me off even more, so I'm just like, Gladys, keep spending. Speaking of that, um, Brooklyn is not there looking at, you know, her phone, and she's like, yo, listen, she's going to put me in bankruptcy if we don't do anything about um, Gladys. So they're talking a little bit to try to strategize how they're going to, you know, neutralize Gladys. And then Chase comes in and Chase is like, yo, listen, um, at first he wants to sit there and try to question um, Maxie. Maxie kind of makes a quick exit and Brooklyn tries to run interference. Like, oh, you're being insensitive and, you know, the, the, the wounds are still fresh and, you know, she, she's not over her trauma and stuff like that. But, you know, I think when Maxie got back or before Maxie got back, you know, Chase was like, yo, listen, I I've been going over those statements and stuff like that. And I'll be honest, there's a lot of stuff that's not adding up. 
So he leaves and now Maxie and Brooklyn are have even more to worry about between Gladys and Chase. But you know, listen, they're like, we can just table Chase for a little bit. They went up on Nina and Nina was able to get um somebody um to deal with Gladys. Because they felt they felt like if, you know, either one of them tried to come at Gladys, you know, she was gonna see it a mile coming. You know, she's gonna see it you know, coming or whatever. Um, and I'm going to be honest. At first, I was not there thinking that, um, I don't know. For some odd reason, I felt like Brooklyn was going to sit there and say, maybe we should get um, Austin to take care of Gladys. But I didn't really see how that was going to work. So anyway, they seem like they have somewhat of a plan. So I guess we'll see. Now, Portia Smith, they're still worried about Curtis and who that guy is. And she talks to Liz, and Liz is like, you know, listen, I can draw you a sketch. If you can, you know, kind of give me some facial features and stuff like that, I can kind of make a sketch, and maybe that will help. So she comes up with a sketch, and Portia goes down to Savoy and gives it to Curtis. Now, Curtis looks at it, and it's like, I, he seems familiar. It would make sense because, you know, Curtis' dad left him when he was really young, and he hasn't seen him since. And track him down or anything like that. I don't really know why, but whatever. Um, now, again, and I'm going to be honest. I did this like three times. But, you know, the old guy overheard Joey threaten um, Curtis when he was at the docks. So I'm sitting there thinking that that guy did something to Joey, which kind of would suck. Um, but I guess we'll, we'll find out more tomorrow, though. And it's like they're talking to Valentine and, you know, Valentine and Victor and stuff like that. And, you know, Valentine wants to know what's going on with the investigation. And Anna's pretty much like, you know, he's pretty much trying to stall for like immunity and stuff. So Valentine, you know, comes over to the plane. He's like, listen, why don't you bring him here? Since he wants to be all father of the year and being all concerned about my health. Maybe I could sit there and, and you know, kind of get him to talk. Anna thinks it's a bad idea, but Valentine's like, yo, listen, where have you get, where have you got with him? You know, Peter's still a threat, and you're no closer to sitting at there finding Peter than you were before. So, and again, and I saw in the previews that they want to bring in Victor to um, Valentine so he can sit there and try to get some information out of him. I mean, if anyone's going to be able to do it at this point, it's going to be Valentine. Oh, and Austin's not exactly clear to go back on active duty yet. And he thinks it's because of Finn when he was sent there talking to um, Liz. Now, you know, Liz is like, maybe he's just being, you know, just want to make sure that you're all getting whatever. But pretty much he's just being a, you know, protective brother at this point. An overprotective brother, but still. I forgot to mention that before. I feel like that's about it for the most part. Um, it's the thing. It's not that I don't hate Olivia. Um, you know, when she first came to town, I felt like she was very interesting. And there's been times lately where she seemed like she was somewhat useless. Um, except for when she was with Robert and they were, you know, doing a whole spy thing or whatever. I thought that was pretty cool. And I don't know if I said this because I'm going to be honest, I've been like, I did this like twice or three times. Olivia has been on this show for a long time. Um, since um, Claudia Sakara, or maybe even before then. Um, so I don't really hate the character. I just hate the way she's been acting lately. And particularly about Leo, because she is just over the top. She's being pretty much insufferable and she's being unreasonable. Um, especially when it comes to his Ned. But Ned, again, I feel like he needs to man up and deal with his wife. So I'm not exactly giving him a free pass and I'm not going to sit there and try to be like, oh, well, you poor victim. Because I'm like, bro, you, you got a voice. <laughs> okay, you got a voice and I, I thought you had a pair of balls, but I guess time will tell. Um... So hopefully we can get back the Olivia that we actually like because I know it's kind of a distant memory, but I do actually like 
you know, I do actually remember at one point liking Olivia. Um, maybe when she was with Johnny, um, Johnny Sakara, I actually pretty much liked her. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I definitely kind of liked her when she was with, um, Johnny. Um, I feel like I'm missing some stuff. I don't know exactly what, but I feel like I'm missing some stuff, like, always, because <sighs> there's just a lot of, a lot of moving, a lot of moving parts in this, um, not in this episode, but just in these episodes in general. And, um, I think I'll just sit there and say it's, it's closing or whatever. I think the two most interesting parts of this episode was when Joey got in there and, um, you know, going out with Carly. And, of course, it's always good to see my guy Cyrus, um, you know, squaring off with Sonny. Besides that, it was just, mm, okay, I guess. I don't know. I feel like that's about it for the most part. Um, if I missed anything, please write it down in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe and I will see you in the next video.